Hey, Jody here. Thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. In a previous video, I did this test plate using a downhill open root short circuit MIG. And I got some questions. Why not uphill? Why'd you weld the root downhill? So in this video, I'm going to weld the root uphill. We'll do a little comparison at the end by cut and etch and check out the difference in the profiles. I will be borrowing some clips from the previous video just to make a complete video out of this thing because the other two passes, the fill pass and the cover pass, were uphill, so they'll be essentially the same. So let's get a little quick review of the downhill route. 17 volts, 180 inches a minute using 035 ER76. And I could have gone up a little higher on the wire feed speed. I feel like it would have pushed the route in a little farther. So we'll see that on the cut and etch though. Just a quick little review here staying on the very very front of that puddle just kind of wiggling it slightly but not so far on the front of the puddle where I shoot wire through that's the root pass you can see it I got a little bit of reinforcement but it's it's rather flat and again the cut net will show that I think that I could probably use these same settings with the uphill pass because what I did is I, I narrowed the gap just a little bit I'm using a 1 8 gap here instead of a 532, and I also put a 1 16th land. These are not knife edge plates now, still 30 degree bevels, 8th inch gap, 1 16th land. And I dropped the wire feed speed down just a little bit, just, just because my gut told me to do so. And let's do the uphill root pass. I always take a few dry runs to make sure my glove or whatever is not going to get hung up on something. So here we go. If you have the settings right and the fit up is right, then there's not much motion that you need to do. Now, if you, if you fire up and you discover that's a little bit hot, you can always come out just a little bit wider on the, on the walls there to cool the puddle off a little bit. But I'm just doing a very slight wiggle here, staying on the front of that puddle. You can see the very front of the puddle is just trying to keyhole a little bit. Not anything crazy. It's not anything that I have to, to uh, counteract by going out on those walls really far. You can see the back side here breaking the walls down pretty good. Gun angle is important and I try to keep mine just about 90 degrees. Camera makes it look like it's kicked way back here and actually it may be. Once you get to welding it the tendency is to lean the gun back a little bit. So if you shoot for straight in you'll probably be leaned back a little bit if you're anything like me. But you don't want to get out of out of scope with that too much. It's pretty forgiving. Just shoot for dead nuts straight in you'll be fine. So you can see that the technique here is just a slight wiggle. You need to wiggle far enough to sort of help the puddle flatten out a little bit. Otherwise, it can be really, really crowned up on the front side. But as long as it's not crowned too much, putting that second pass in there is not a problem. Now, just a FYI, the downhill route does travel a good bit faster. You can see here the difference in the uphill versus downhill time. The main thing is you just have to follow the procedure. If you have a procedure for downhill route, that's what you do. If the procedure says uphill, you go uphill. If there is no procedure, then just be smart. Now I do think that open routes like this with a nice clean metal, everything's clean, 30 degree bevel or even up to 45 degree bevels lend themselves very well to a downhill route. But again, follow the procedure. After the route pass, I like to go uphill. Again, I'm borrowing some clips from the prior video here. This is the technique. It's sort of a little arc. You can also just do a straight up Z weave, but I believe this one helps the, the pass to flatten out a little bit more. Seems to, seems to work for me anyway. You'll see on the arc shot here that I'm kind of doing a little bit of an arc and then kind of backing up into the puddle a little bit just momentarily as I hold the toes. And I'm trying to leave this 1 16th below flush. Usually there is a, a limit on the, the, uh, the, the cap reinforcement, and that limit is usually an eighth of an inch. And it's very easy to go higher than that with short circuit MIG. Seems to deposit more than you think. That's why I like to be 1 16th below flush before the cover pass. Now I will let this cool, not completely cool, but around 150, where I don't really want to touch it with a bare hand, but I could for a moment if I wanted to. And here the main thing is just overlap those edges by only about a sixteenth and try to do it evenly each time. Here's my setting, 17.7 volts, 200 inches a minute. There's a lot of settings that will work for this joint, but if you think about it, this, this last weave here is almost like weaving on flat metal. It just doesn't have a whole lot of place to, to bite and since I'm just almost flush, so it just doesn't require a lot of heat. 
if I had the, the voltage and wire feed speed or even just the wire feed speed really a lot higher it would just be harder to maintain that 1 8 limit on the cap reinforcement. Here's a quick look at it all wire wheeled up and now I did a cut and etch in the prior video of the root pass you can see what it looks like right here it looks like there's a little bit of a reinforcement not a lot but doing a cross-section cut and etch you can see there's not much at all it's, it's above flush but barely and that just happens to be where I cut it might have been better other places this is the uphill you, it looks like it's protruding through a good bit further and you can see here that it definitely is so definitely you're gonna get different characteristics gotta follow the procedure Hey, well that about wraps it up. My store is at weldmonger.com. I recently added these TIG gloves to my store. Two things I, I really like about these, and I tested a bunch of them. One is the palm is seamless. And I have put gloves on before and split that seam right there. So this doesn't have a seam right there. Another thing I really like about them, they run just a little big. Every time I go to Fabtech, which is right around the corner, by the way, I shake hands with a lot of people. There's some big hands out there. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you next time.